Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a very exciting one. It is my first ever yearly favorites. Um, and it's my first ever because I started my YouTube channel in February of 2018, February of this year or last year when you're watching this video. And I cannot believe the year is already over. I'm sure there are people who always say like, this year went by so fast, but I genuinely feel like this year just flew by. January 2018 was an eon long. It literally felt like five years smashed into one month. It was incredibly long. And I know a lot of other people feel that way for some reason, but the rest of the year, February onward, just flew by. Um, it's honestly baffling, but I am so grateful. 2018 was such a, a roller coaster year for me personally. Career wise, I got a new career. Um, it's the first full year that I've lived somewhere else other than LA, and I, I've really found a lot out about myself and I adopted Maple of 2017 but this is my first full year with her anyway it was just a lot of personal growth career growth things like that and that's like the only thing that I can continue to hope for as New Year's come and roll around but yeah Wow, none of you asked for that little like personal spiel, but um, yeah, here we are. I'm going to share with you my top favorite products of 2018. It was really hard for me to narrow some of these down because they're not necessarily things that I think are like my all time holy grails or just things that I really used a lot in this year that I really wanted to just stay true to that. Things that I really used a lot that I really love, things that I think are really, really great. Thank you so much for subscribing to me. As of right now, when I'm filming this video, I have 170 subscribers and that seems so paltry. Honestly, obviously I hope to keep growing, but for me what YouTube is about is just having, providing content to be that safe space at the end of the day if you're stressed from work or life. Yeah, without further ado, if you wanna see everything I'm gonna mention, don't forget to please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I post, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. Okay, so I'm going to go in order from like my face, to eyes because typically on a daily basis I do do my face products first. So I have two primers I want to mention to you. The first is the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. It's a primer I'm currently wearing on my face today. It's just a beautiful primer. It's not that expensive for a Sephora. It's $18. You do get one full fluid ounce. The packaging is great. Comes in a frosted bottle. You pump it out. Definitely has a silicone texture but it's not like Smashbox Photo Finish or Benefit Professional that is thick and will peel off your face. This is really just smooth smooth and it truly just melts into your face so it's a little bit thinner in consistency but it's just as smooth if not more smooth in my opinion I think the price is right I think the packaging is adorable I think this product is just so good and the other primer I want to mention is the Too Faced primed and peachy mattifying primer I don't know if you guys know this but you might if you watch my videos the Too Faced peach line I have three products that made it to my yearly favorites from that line is one of my favorite cosmetic collections of all time. It's only available at Sephora, but this is just a great line. It smells really good. It's targeted for oily skin, which is what I have, and their products are just really, really good, and I love the packaging. I can travel with it because it's not in a glass bottle that will break. I just love the squeezy tube and the pump. This comes out like a little bit more thick than the Touch and Soul Primer. It's definitely got a thicker whipped consistency, as you can see right here, but you can just blend it out and it creates kind of like a tacky layer. Like it feels cooling to the touch, it smells great, and it also smooths your pores like the No Problem one. But what I love about this is the overall experience. It's cooling on the skin, it feels really nice. It fills in those pores and it provides a nice base for makeup. But if you concentrate it like right in this area, it does provide like a nice tacky base for makeup to sit on top. So in my opinion, this is all around like the most versatile primer. I think it's so nice and it smells really good. Moving on to foundation, I have three things, by the way, by the way, I want to mention my shirt I got for Christmas from Wild Fox, it says dogs are people too. But anyway, I just want to point out my shirt because I think it's really cute. And my mom made me a custom blanket, which is what you see on my bed right now. It's a collage of my dog and the photos that she's in. So things that I've taken, things that my mom's taken, these are photos with my mom, my dad, etc., my sister, my boyfriend, Maple just on her own and the little thing over there says Mapleine 2018, which is what my mom calls her. So yeah, it was like my, the best gift I ever received, honestly. I, I cried like a baby. I opened that blanket up on Christmas morning. I literally bawled. It was like, I don't know why. I just felt so emotionally like touched. Anyway, sorry, back to the makeup. I just wanted to share that with you guys. 
I have three foundations to talk about in this video. And again, it was hard for me to narrow down, but let's just go ahead and start with the obvious. The Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation is my favorite foundation of all time. It's a comfort matte formula, again, from that same line as the primer. This is in the shade Sand, so it is a bit dark for me right now. They do not have the best color selection, I will say right off the bat, um, but this formula is so good. It's medium to full coverage. It is so easy to travel with because the packaging, it smells really good. I just look at this and I want to use it. You know how like sometimes packaging does that to you? But I'm so glad that the formula inside is really nice. It's oil-free, 14-hour wear, oil controlling, and photo-friendly. I don't think this is the mattest of foundations by any means. I don't think it's a truly matte foundation. I think it is a true satin finish. So for that reason, I think it suits a lot more skin types than just oily skin. Like I know some people with dry skin really do like this foundation as well. I have not experienced an irritation with it. And this is actually a little bit more generous of product. You get 1.6 fluid ounces for $36, I believe, which is great for Sephora because oftentimes you get like the standard one ounce for like $40 or more. So it's really great. The price point's great. The formula is great. You can really build this up, but it just blends out so nice. It is the best foundation. Definitely my desert island foundation. Like if I had to take one foundation to a desert island, this is the one I would take. And then the one I'm wearing on my face right now, this is like the best drugstore foundation or it's the one that I've used most all year round. Like I know that whenever I want a good drugstore formula, I just pull this out and it works for me every time. It never lets me down. This is the LA Girl Pro Matte HD High Definition Foundation. This is in the shade Medium Beige. Again, not the best color selection. I don't know what it is with drugstore brands specifically, but they just, they don't have a lot of color options. Um, but it's, yeah, anyway, it's it's a problem. But this foundation, if you can find a shade that matches you or if you can mix a couple shades, this is really, really nice. You get like a frosted bottle and like a nice pump. And this is a reliable pump too. This is just such reliable packaging. It's a really nice experience. Two full pumps covers my entire face. Again, it's what I have right now all over my face. It blends out so nice, definitely medium to full coverage and definitely more of a matte finish than the Peach Perfect. But it's so nice. It truly is long wearing and it's $8. So the price is right. I highly recommend. And by the way, all of these things I mentioned are cruelty free because I am a cruelty free YouTuber, I guess. So this is cruelty free. It's good stuff. And I highly recommend it if you're looking for a good foundation, not just an affordable foundation, a good all around matte foundation. And then last but not least, I have to give a shout out to this guy. This is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. This is also a little bit too dark for me right now because this is my summer shade. This is the shade Latte. I believe Jouer has since expanded their shade selection since launching their first round of foundations, which is when I bought this one. Um, it's really, really good. This is a full coverage foundation. They are not kidding. This is the foundation I will always use either this or my hourglass foundation. If I'm going out, if I'm going, you know, taking pictures, special occasions, things that I really want my makeup to look really, really nice. And this is also a matte finish, but I would say it's more matte satin. It's not super, super, super matte. This um, has hyaluronic acid, so it's not going to dry out your skin because hyaluronic acid attracts moisture. It's matte, it's oil free and it's just really, really good. I think it's amazing. You can now find Jouer at Sephora. So if you're looking for a good, like full coverage, that special occasion foundation, I recommend this one. Okay, moving on to concealer. I have three brands to talk about that I think just took me through 2018. Of course, I've discovered new things um, here and there, but these are the ones that I would always go back to. And of course, I have to start with the Tarte Shape Tape. I mean, this is just so cliche at this point. I have two shades. I have Light Medium Honey. This is the one I will always repurchase for highlighting. And then I have Tan because one time I wanted to buy Medium and they didn't have Medium. So now I just mix this with this if I want to spot conceal. A little goes such a long way. I love the scent. It's not like scented per se, but it has a nice fresh scent so it doesn't smell like chemicals. It has a giant doe foot applicator. And do you see how much product comes off on it right away? I have to really just like scrape off the excess and I can just apply like two stripes here, two stripes here and blend it out. I never do those like big triangles because um, what you blend, you extend, which is uh, um, a quote from, I believe, Wayne Goss. He is like a makeup mastermind here on YouTube and also he's got brushes and things like that. But yeah, I just do two stripes here and blend it out because what I put here, I'm going to blend out anyway. So that's what I do and it just takes me so far. It's really, really, really nice. I love how creamy it is. It's a great concealer and I will continue using it because it's just my top dog. 
my top dog. And probably my favorite highlighting concealer, actually, like this is my favorite like all around concealer. My favorite under eye highlighting concealer is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage Concealer. This is obviously um, a drugstore alternative. You can see I'm almost out. I need a new one. The wand is obviously a lot skinnier than the Tarte Shape Tape, but this is so nice. This is in the shade 020 or 020 Light Beige. I don't know if it's the color that I love so much that really just brightens up my eyes, but this is such a nice concealer to truly just like it's such full coverage it's so smooth glides on the skin it's so liquidy and thin that you can blend it out to perfection like you can literally just tap in your sponge your brush two seconds and you're done it's the easiest to blend it's very beginner friendly and i think it's great it's it got a great consistency and i think it's amazing six dollars you cannot beat it this concealer is also six dollars this is the ColourPop no filter concealer and actually i didn't realize until now that all three of these concealers have different wands and i'll show you that the ColourPop one has like a flat paddle shape so it's more flexible this is the concealer that i used on my face today i didn't actually go in with a spot concealer i just use this as my under eye and my spot conceal i love how liquidy it is you just blend it on to your skin it's very liquidy it's not as liquidy as this one this one is definitely like the most like thin formula out of all the concealers i'm mentioning today this one is kind of like right in the middle between these two in terms of consistency it's very full coverage very easy to spot conceal um very easy to build as well and it's great i i purchase this time and time again because it's so good okay moving on to powder i have four powders to talk about and that is because one of them is definitely the essence brighten up banana powder i keep this on my vanity i switch out my makeup every day when i go to work um every time i come back from work i like to switch out products just because i like to get the most out of all the things i have in my collection so I will always switch stuff out, but this is always the one thing on my vanity I do not move. This always stays on my vanity. I use it every single time I do my makeup. I travel with it. This is $5 from Essence. It's a beautiful banana powder. You can see you get a lot. It's sheer, but it's very buildable, and it just it's very smooth. I use this with a tapered brush. Like today, I went in with my Juvia's Place tapered brush, and I just set under the eyes with this. I'll highlight in the middle between my brows, down the center of my face, and this just gives me a really beautiful effect. It is so nice. I love it. $5, you cannot beat the price. In terms of face powders, I have two loose powders and one press powder. Let's start with the press powder. This is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Press Powder. This is definitely a powder that I discovered later on in the third quarter of the year, as you guys may have seen. But this is a really nice, smooth powder. It looks chalky and white, but it does not translate like that on the face at all. This is such a smooth powder. It truly does blur your skin, and it truly does make your skin look like it has a filter on it. It does not emphasize texture. Texture. It does not emphasize blemishes. It just sets your makeup in the most beautiful way. And this is definitely money well spent because the formula is great and it's a great everyday powder. I even turned my friend Kianoush onto it. Like we were shopping one day here at uh, Sephora. She was telling me how her makeup used to like move around because she didn't set with powder. And I was like, girl, you gotta try this one. It's really, really good because it's a pressed powder. It's very beginner friendly. And she's someone who doesn't really have a lot of like makeup brushes. Like she's not excessive at all. So she even just uses the sponge that comes with it. And I asked her, I was like, how do you like the powder? She was like, it actually just works so well for my skin. It makes my makeup stay on all day. And I was like, that makes me so happy because I recommended something that actually works for other people. So yeah, long story short, this is a great powder and I highly recommend it. Next up for loose powders, I have two to talk about. This is the one I'm wearing on my face right now. This is the Hard Candy Fast and Fabulous Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I love it. It is so finely milled. It's not a thick powder by any means. So it is a little bit more dusty, like it'll fly everywhere. It looks like this. I don't want to open it too much this was six dollars i believe and i've had this for i think over a year now at this point and i still have a lot left this is my go-to powder when i'm not taking photos because it does have flashback when i'm not taking photos and i just want something to set my face and be good to go especially in those hot vegas summer days i will always wear this powder or most of the time wear this powder it's really nice it doesn't have talc which is something that i really really love but it just keeps my makeup on 
all day. This is probably like my most like mattifying powder. It's really, really nice. It's not heavy at all. So I think it's awesome. Uh, and then last but not least, another powder I just have to mention because I did use it a lot this year is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. This powder's density is a lot heavier. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's not as like cornstarchy as this one. Like it's a lot more flowery. This one's a lot more cornstarchy in texture, if that makes sense. So this is a little bit more heavy, but it doesn't feel heavy on the face. It just feels like when you pour it out, it's like globs. I don't know if that makes any sense. Just, just forget me. It's a great powder. It's great for making your makeup stay matte as well. And it does have that nice peachy universal tint. So when I go out and I want to set my face, but I want it to last, I don't use this. I use this because it does not give me flashback because it is like that translucent neutral peach undertone, which looks great on pretty much any skin tone. So I think this is really nice and it's a great high end powder if you're looking for something to keep your makeup on and matte and plus it smells like peaches so good. All right, moving on to bronzer. I have two to share with you today. Let's start with the one I'm wearing on my face right now. This is the Kiko Milano Flawless Fusion Powder in the shade 06 Cinnamon. This packaging is so good. Kiko is one of those like inexpensive brands. It's not drugstore. It's kind of it has a price point between drugstore and high end that it's just so good. The packaging is great. You can travel with it. It's very sturdy. It has a mirror. This color is just so beautiful and warm. You can see right here a lot comes off it's very creamy and but very buildable and it just blends out so nicely i love this and i use this throughout the entire year it's one of my favorite bronzers of all time but what i discovered this year this is the anastasia powder bronzer in the shade saddle this packaging is really pretty too i've traveled with this it's got a little bit of a cooler undertone than cinnamon by kiko as you can see right here they're very similar the kiko one's just a tad warmer and has a tad more orange this one is a tad more brown but both regardless work great on my medium skin tone this doesn't feel as like creamy and as powdery as the kiko one but with that being said it's one of those bronzers that you can just build and build and build and you don't get kick up when you put your brush into it like it just you can layer it so nicely and build it without worrying that it's going to look like too oompa loompa it's just a great bronzer overall the formula is really smooth and i go back to this time and time again when i want a really nice smooth matte bronzer it's 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 good stuff it's the bee's knees moving on to blush i have three brands to share with you two of which are from the same one this is the essence satin touch blush this is satin coral and satin love satin love is the one i'm wearing on my face right now the packaging isn't the best but again these are two dollars so the price is right they're so creamy so pigmented and so buildable like these are the most buildable blushes they never look too heavy on your skin they just look like perfection like it doesn't look like i have clown cheeks so easy to blend out i think it's truly amazing and for the price you absolutely cannot beat these blushes next up i want to give a shout out to the burt's bees blush in the shade bare peach looks like this this doesn't give as much color payoff it's not as like creamy as the essence ones but you can see right here if i really just kind of like dig my finger into it it really deposits color but that's what i love about this like it's very buildable it doesn't start off super harsh you never get a harsh application with this blush and this is one that i would always reach for if i was like looking into my drawer i didn't know what to pick like this is always kind of like my go to like yes you work for anything you're tried and true i don't think i'm gonna get clown cheeks with you like this was really good and it's just one that i always go back to um the formula is infused with bamboo they have two other shades burst bees blushes are really good and then last but not least, I have to say that this is probably my favorite high-end blush discovery of 2018. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blush in the shade uh, That Peach, though. And this is the creamiest formula of all time. You put your finger into this and you think it's a cream, but it's actually a powder. Like, it feels like a cream. And you get so much color payoff right away. But again, it's also buildable. I know I'm showing you these, like, corally peach blushes, and you think that these kind of look the same which they kind of do in the pan, side by side. But this one obviously is more vibrant. This is the creamiest formula, therefore there's no kick up, it's so easy to blend. It never looks harsh or powdery on your skin, it just kind of melts in. It's really good stuff. I highly recommend any of the Bare Minerals Gen Nude um, blushes. They're really, really good if you're not into a peach, if you want more of a neutral or a brown or a pink, definitely check out this line. They're really, really nice. 
I have three highlighters to share with you. The first one is the one I'm wearing on my skin right now. This is the Essence Pure Nude Highlight in the shade Be My Highlight. This is like an overall face highlight, if you will, but you can build it up to get like a really intense glow. And I use this with a natural haired brush. So you can really get a lot out of this product. It's not like an overall face glow for me, but it can like just illuminate. Do you see how like it just illuminated my entire hand? You get a lot out of this. It's just so nice. You can use it for everything. I always travel with this. If I don't want something that's shimmery, because there's absolutely no shimmer, as you can see in here, there's like no shimmer. It's just a sheen. If you want something like that, I highly recommend this highlight. It's so good and so affordable. It's like three or four dollars at Ulta. Such good stuff. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, pretty much nine times out of 10, whenever I go out, parties, clubs, bars, out with my friends, this is the highlight I will use. This is the JCAT Baked Highlight in the shade Crystal Sand. This is the You Glow Girl Baked Highlight. This is the most intense highlight ever. Like, I'll show you one swipe. Do you see that? It is insanely reflective but it's a baked formula, so it's not going to look chunky on your skin, and it will last you a really, really long time. Like, this is always just one that I can go back to time and time again, because look at that, look at that. It's so beautiful, it's very intense, very blinding. Probably my most blinding highlight in my collection, but for that reason, it's just my go-to when it comes to special events, formal occasions, night out, things like that. It's, it's so good if you wanna be glowing on a budget, definitely get this one. It's so good. And then in terms of a highlighting palette, I have to talk about this. This is the Tarte Skin Twinkle Palette Volume 1. These are the creamiest highlights ever. It comes with a more champagne one. This is Moonlight, this is Sunlight, and this is Filtered Light, which is kind of like a matte yellow brightening powder, which is also really nice. But every time I use this palette, I travel with this because it's very easy to travel with. I always mix these two shades, and they are so creamy. Look, one swipe, one swipe. This also will get you glowing. Look at that. Look how smooth that is. It's just so beautiful. And they do have a volume two palette. I don't think they sell the volume one palette anymore, but I just had to mention it because you might like the volume two palette because it has an extra shade, I believe. And it's so creamy, so buttery. If you're looking for a highlighting palette that's a little bit more expensive, this was $42. I think it's so good and truly worth the money. Last but not least for face, before we move on to the eyes, I have to talk about setting sprays. And I have three to share with you. I think three is like my magic number in this video. Um, let's start with the one that I repurchase time and time again. This is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I set my face with this today. It is just so easy. This is a brand new bottle, um, but look, it's just, just one continuous spray to get every angle of your face. It's such a fine mist. It doesn't leave your face sopping wet and it does not leave harsh drip marks, which is why I love it. And it truly just makes your makeup look really beautiful. As you can see right here, my highlight looks like one with my skin. Everything just looks like it's set into my face. And it's important to use setting spray in my opinion, especially if you have oily skin, because if you powder your face and you know you go out in the day it can start to break down and look powdery so you're gonna want to have that like water or that mist to just kind of set everything in to seal the deal it's really good the easiest setting spray my go-to setting spray when it comes to perfecting my makeup and making it look really really nice I want to give a shout out to the Milani Make It Last setting spray. You can see I'm almost done with it. This is probably my favorite drugstore setting spray in terms of one that I go back to time and time again when I want my makeup to last. And it does have denatured alcohol in it, so I don't like to use it on a daily basis. But the mist is also really, really fine. It's $10 for two fluid ounces, so it's not terrible for the drugstore. So if you want something to like take you through the day or take you through the night, um, this is a good one. And then last but not least, one of my newest favorite things. This is the Cover Effects High Performance Setting Spray. I know I just mentioned this in a favorites video and in a haul, but this is truly one of the best setting sprays ever. It does not have alcohol, but for some reason, it just manages to make your makeup just stay in place all day. I wear this to work quite often, and I know that it's not like breaking down my skin's barrier because it has no denatured alcohol. It keeps it fresh. It protects it from environmental aggressors. It's so nice. It's truly like, the best best for long wear oh i lied i have one more spray i want to mention this is the elf beauty shield and i don't actually use this as like a setting spray per se well okay let me explain i never use this as a setting spray for um 
like makeup days like I would never set my face with this but if I'm going in for like a no makeup makeup look on the weekends when I'm running errands I'm just wanting a little bit of concealer and powder I will always use this to set my face because there's barely anything on it so it doesn't have to like keep it on but I would always use this throughout the entire year to add that layer of like defense and to just like set in the little powder and makeup I did have it's really nice eight dollars it smells really good it's great for like an everyday mist all right, let's move on to eyes and this video is already half an hour long so let's just keep it moving um let's talk about eyebrow products i only have two things i want to share with you this year which is what i have on my brows right now this is the elf brow pencil in the shade dark brown i believe yeah deep brown sorry excuse me this is the best brow pencil it is two dollars and if i could only use one brow pencil for the rest of my life I don't need my Anastasia brow pencils. I don't need any of the fancy ones. Just give me this and I'll be good. It's so easy to use. It has a very creamy texture, so it's very easy to blend out and buff. Like, I used to not wear brow pencil at all because I would always just dread the task of filling in my brows. It's still my least favorite part, but for some reason, when I'm done, it's the most satisfying. So I would never fill my brows in on a daily basis. Now that I've been introduced to this, I can fill in my sparse areas and give me a really natural shaped look really, really fast. And it's just so good if you're a beginner looking to fill in your brows, but you don't want to spend like $20 on a brow is, I recommend this brow pencil. It just gets the job done. And then the, my favorite brow gel, because every time I fill in my brows with a pencil, I always set it with brow gel. This is the NYX um, Tinted Brow Mascara in the shade espresso i have bought this time and time again it has a fibery formula so if you're looking for that i recommend this so much and this is one of those brow gels that before i started filling in my brows with a pencil every day i would just put this through my brows to add a little bit of color a little bit of dimension and be done and out the door and on my no makeup makeup days that's exactly what i'll do let's tackle eyeliners before we get on to eyeshadows let's tackle eyeliners and mascaras i have two eyeliners to share with you today um the first one i'm wearing on my eyes right now this is the urban decay all nighter eyeliner it looks like this it's just a retractable black liner this is so nice very inky very creamy it does not skip on the waterline it stays intact and i'm wearing this like on my tight line so i'm not wearing this like on my lid i will sometimes just put this on my tight line right here and it'll just last all day and it's really good i can always count on this it does not stab you it stays intact it's like everything you could ask for in a black coal liner it's retractable but one that I would always use, the only liquid liner I use right now, this is the only one that I ever travel with. This is the Tardis Double Take Eyeliner. And I love this to travel because it has a liquid on one side. It's got a felt tip on one side that stays very moist. It does not dry out. So that's really, really good. And it has a cold pencil on the other side. The cold pencil isn't my favorite. I will say that this one is better. This is more creamy. It glides on better. You have to work with this a little bit more in order for it to show up. But with that being said, I think it's great, especially to travel with. And this liquid liner is the only liquid liner that I use. It's so black, so intense. It just gives you a perfect line every time. It's really good and it's the only one that I used all year long, truly. It's good stuff. Let's talk about mascaras because I have three to share with you. Um, we'll start with a tried and true OG. This is the Tardis Lash Paint. This is my favorite high-end mascara of all time, pretty much. It's got a rubberized wand, so it's not a natural wand but you can really build this up. It is more of a wet formula, so if you don't like that, then you might not like this mascara, but it truly gives me lashes like no other, and I'm someone who has to curl my lashes every day and stuff because I have straight eyelashes. This just helps me get volume and length. It's really good. The one I'm wearing on my lashes right now is the Essence Forbidden Volume Mascara. This is, out of the three of them, the newest to my collection. This is also a wet formula. You can see it kind of has like a tapered wand, but this is so inexpensive. It was like $2, I believe, when I bought it, and it truly gives me such dramatic lashes. Like, I don't know if you can tell right here so nice. it like. builds really nicely it's got that wet formula that you can really just get a dramatic bold look out of it's and then last but not least one that you've seen before is the essence lash princess volume mascara contrary to those two mascaras this is a drier formula it's got fibers in it so it really builds on your natural lashes and adds to them like literally and you can see the wand is a curved acorn wand which is what i like also in a mascara this one probably does the best job of giving my lashes a nice lift and a curl like these are better for lengthening and volumizing this one is good for just giving your lashes a really beautiful even 
feathery curled look. It's really, really nice and also very inexpensive. Okay, let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. And I had to really narrow this down, but I have three to share with you today. These are just the ones that I felt like through the entire year, even though one of these is a little bit newer to me. Um, these are the ones I would always go back to. So let's start with the most OG of the three. This is the BH Cosmetics Glam Reflections L'Amour palette. You can see it right here. The packaging is so amazing. You get like a nice tin. You could travel with this. And I love the color story in this because it's got really romantic pinks, but also purples and blues. I'll swatch a few for you right now. I've mentioned this in favorites videos. They're so vibrant, so creamy. Like, do you see that? I'm live swatching this matte for you. They're so beautiful. And they're truly so pigmented, very easy to blend. And you can get this on sale for like 10 bucks. And it's so beautiful. This white is literally like, look at that one swipe. Great to highlight your brow bone, your inner corner. This is an overall great palette. They have a couple other color stories of the same like um, like packaging and stuff like that, but this is so good. They're creamy, easy to blend, very pigmented, and I go back to this time and time again whenever I want like a pinky, mauve -y look, or if I want a really dark, smoky eye, like this can do it all. And then I have to talk about this because this is what's on my eyes right now. This is something that I traveled with a lot. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. This is probably my favorite neutral palette. Anastasia Shadows, this was my first year ever trying out like an Anastasia palette. I don't have the Modern Renaissance, so I really knew that I wanted to get Soft Glam because it does have a lot of neutral colors. And this is a beautiful palette. I'm wearing this on my eyes right now. I have burnt orange in my crease and on my lid, orange soda in my crease, Sienna and Cypress Umber in my outer corner, and Rustic also on my lid and my crease. And I highlighted my inner corner and brow bone with Tempura and added a touch of glistening right in the middle. These shadows are so pigmented. They're foiled and they are no joke. So be careful because look at that. They're very extremely pigmented, but with that being said, they're so beautiful and really easy to work with. And you can truly get so many looks out of this. You can get neutral looks, you can get more bold looks, you can get deep smoky looks, you can get pink looks. I've done a Mother's Day tutorial with this palette that I did like a pink glam look. It's really good and I love this palette. Like, I love it. And then the third palette I wanna mention today is the Violet Lavos Pro Eyeshadow Palette in the hashtag shade. This is something I also discovered in the third quarter of this year, but I've also traveled with this, believe it or not, because this packaging is like compact, but it has a nice mirror that you can just like prop up into your makeup. It's truly like I can look at myself and get like, I get my whole face in this. It's really, really nice. This palette is so good. I'll try to link any corresponding video of me using or featuring these products down below so you can have like a point of reference if you want to see it in action or more in depth. This is so good. I bought this palette because I wanted something that was like this unique for fall. I don't have anything else in my collection that has a color story like this, but these foils are so intense. And these mattes too. Like you can get really pretty pink looks, really pretty golden looks, neutral looks. Like this black is amazing as well. You can see like I just did very light swatches and they're so beautiful. Look. They blend out so nicely. Look at that. Look at that. And they just look so nice on your eyes. They're very flattering, very complimentary. And I use that palette a ton like in the third quarter of this year. Like this was like my OG. And I think it's amazing and I highly recommend it. Okay, last but not least to round out this hour long video, I have lip products to share with you. And I have one lipstick. It was so hard for me to narrow this down because I am constantly changing my lip colors, but I had to really sit here and think to myself, what did I truly use the most all year round? Like what was I always going back for and reaching for? And the answer that I came up with are these. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Lipstick in the shade Strip. It looks like this. And I decided to mention this lipstick out of all of my lipsticks because this is the one that I feel like I used the most. If I was wearing a look and I wanted something that was new that I could just throw on and be out the door, this is always the lipstick I would use. If I was doing a no makeup makeup look where I just did concealer, powder, and brows, I would always use this lipstick. It's just so nice. It has like a nice creamy consistency but you can see it's kind of like shiny and balmy so it feels really nice and emollient on the lips 
it's truly flattering. It doesn't give you too much color pigment. It's not too opaque. So it works for pretty much any kind of look you're going for. I think it's so nice. And then in terms of liquid lipsticks, I have two brands to share with you that I just kept going back to all year round. The first one is the NYX Liquid Suede Lipstick in the shade Sandstorm. One of my favorite colors of all time. It's a little bit moussey, but it's so comfortable. You can see one swipe full opaque color. It doesn't dry down completely. My favorite lipstick formulas or my favorite liquid lipstick formulas are ones that are more tacky, more satin, more velvet, more moussey, because those are the ones that are most comfortable on my lips. And I pr definitely prefer that over a super bone dry matte lipstick. So I think this color for some reason is super flattering on my skin tone. Like whenever I wear this, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. It looks so good. Even though it is more cool toned, this is like one of my favorite things of all time. And then I have to talk about these two specific ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips. Ultra Satin Lips are one of my favorite formulas of all time, but these two are probably the colors that I wore the most all year round. And the first one is Echo Park, which is a ColourPop classic. It's kind of like a peachy formula you can see the wand is like this and it definitely is a little bit more moussey but you can see that it's like full opaque color it's a really pretty peachy nude really beautiful very flattering and then what i'm wearing on my lips right now is probably my favorite brownie nude of all time this is in the shade stripped and for some reason i don't know if this is because it's newer to my collection this is a little bit more liquidy in formula than the echo park lipstick for some reason even though they're both ultra satin lips but you can see right here or and on my lips this is strip and this is echo park so you can see there's more brown to it which i think is such a flattering undertone for my skin personally like this is my perfect nude i love it so much it's so beautiful and i'm so glad i discovered it this year because it is like my ride or die pretty much and then last but not least to round up this video i want to talk about my favorite gloss of 2018 this is the fenty beauty gloss balm in the shade fenty glow i love the packaging i love the smell i actually had to bring this back from my desk at work because i keep it there when i just want to reapply i find that throughout the day if my lips are getting cracked this is the one thing that just keeps them hydrated because it's a gloss so it stays on but it's not too sticky it's it's amazing and this wand is like a fat wand. It's just so nice. And a little goes such a long way. Like every time I will have to wipe off my brush because I don't need all of it. So it will truly last you a long time. It just provides a juicy, beautiful, sheer wash of like that rose nude color. It's beautiful. And it's going to go right back into my purse to take back to my office when I am done with this video. Okay, everyone, we have made it to the end of this video. I cannot believe it. 45 minutes later, a roundup of my 2018 best of makeup. I did not mention skincare and stuff like that because I just did my skincare collection video. I'll link that down below so you can see kind of like a more all-encompassing view at what I'm using right now. But I want to thank you so much for watching. Um, as I said in the beginning of this video, YouTube is something that I started this year because I love makeup. I love cruelty-free makeup. I love beauty, I love lifestyle, I love skincare. Of course, growth is something that I strive for and everybody should always strive to grow in whatever avenue they choose to pursue. But this is like my hobby, you know, like I have a full-time job and this is something that I love doing on the side. Yeah, here's 2019, here's to a great year. I hope you had a great year and I hope 2019 is even better for you. I want to thank you so much for watching and leaving comments whenever, it's just, it's amazing getting to interact with you and, um truly humbling so yeah thank you so much for watching i hope 2019 is even better than 2018 i have a feeling it just might be but yeah thank you again and i hope to see you in my next video happy new year Mwah. bye